What is up guys, Race to Glory here and welcome back to another part of my F1 23 My Team career mode. Today we have Spa and you'll notice, unlike the previous couple of episodes, we're not jumping straight into the race weekend because we've got a contract renewal to go through. Will we keep Felipe Dragovic? I'll tell you right now, the answer is no. We will be replacing Felipe Dragovic. He started the season so well and he's had, had some good pace in the last couple of episodes. But it's not been good enough for him to keep his seat. He's not got the points. To, to I've had to drag the team up this year in the constructors. And I've been thinking a long time about who we should sign. Albon doing really well in the Alfa Romeo. But we, he's just outside our budget. So I have decided to go with Oscar Piastri. As you can see on screen now, we will be approaching him. And we will be in a bidding war with McLaren for the young Australian. One minute to decide whether we will be keeping Piastri, we, whether we will be signing Piastri for the remainder of this season. Let's go see. So a 5.1 mil bid, that is not going to be enough. And McLaren come back with a 5.25 mil. And, and will they accept that? No, we go with they go with we we keep going. We're gonna keep going for Piastri. We want him badly, and as long as we are ahead at the end with a higher amount of money, we should be good to keep Piastri. So five point seven mil within the last twenty seconds. What are McLaren gonna accept that? No, they're not. Ten seconds remaining. We're going. We're gonna go with a large bid. 5.9 million are McLaren being are gonna are they gonna see that no they're gonna go with a 5.95 million and that is going to be enough for us to sign Oscar Piastri for the remainder of the 90 rated now is Oscar Piastri now he's signed for us but the question is now other teams McLaren will have lost their driver who are they gonna you take to replace him are we going to have a mid-season madness in the transfer window. Let's find out now. Before we go to the race weekend. Now let's see who has moved. Felipe Drogovic has gone to Williams alongside Liam Lawson. Which means Logan Sargent has moved from Williams. He's left Williams and he's gone to Aston Martin to partner I assume Lance Stroll, yes, which means Fernando Alonso, I believe. Um, it's gone to McLaren. Yes, Alonso's back at McLaren. What a fairy tale end to his career that will be. Landon Norris staying at McLaren and Albon staying at Alfa Romeo. So no one managed to poach him, but what a mad transfer window for that then. Mid-season contracts expiring. People did not want to renew them. Aston Martin have poached Logan Sargent. And McLaren have signed Fernando Alonso. Wow. What an interesting transfer window. Now let's head to the race weekend. Where we are here in Spa. A long, straight, a sort of somewhat damp qualifying. But a dry race, I believe. As now here we are looking at those some statistics we need to we need to get the extract the maximum performance out of our car it did look quite dry in qualify damping qualifying in Q1 and it was a bit wet but the but the track has dried Oscar Piastri did not make it through into Q3 but that is to be expected only his first race but he did make it through into Q2 which is very solid in his first race getting used to the new car other people who fell, Felipe Djokovic was out in Q1, which shows exactly why we got rid of him. Sorry, Felipe, but it had to be done. Maybe we dented his confidence a bit by not signing him, re-signing him, and he had to go to a, a lot worse team, I would say. You know, first to last in this championship. Not ideal for him whatsoever. But this lap needs to be good from us. We need to deliver. It's a sprint weekend, remember. So we've got less tyres than normal. So we need to m use the tyres that we've got to good effect as we head to the chicane here. I hate this chicane so much. I can never get it tuned up right. I either break too early or too late. But this was a rare occasion where I actually did manage 
to do reasonably well on entry but on exit it was too good to be true I couldn't do, make it perfect on exit but as we come round the final couple corners here the flat out section towards the bus stop chicane Round the final corner, there is a car ahead of us. I believe that's the McLaren of Lando Norris. I do not think that's Fernando Alonso, but we'll see. As we break, turn into the bus stop chicane, turn out, and it's a short run to the line. Fastest lap so far is a 142.8 from Ocon, but we do a 141.7, which is good enough for provisional pole here in Spa. But is it going to stay that way? And no, it is not. George Russell pips us the pole by 0 0.018 seconds. That is absolutely crazy. The margins are so close. The top four separated by less by a tenth of a second. Wow. And Esteban Ocon over a second of his teammate. Here we go then, five red lights for the sprint. Yes, it's soaking, the race was dry. The qualifying was dry, but the sprint is absolutely wet. On full wet tyres, it's lights out. And away we go. Immediately going to go for the lead over George Russell. We're going to be on the outside though. We have to go to neutral to get this car so down, but can we hang it round the outside? Yes, we can. We are up into P1 in this sprint immediately. Not messing around and up into P1 we go. Fantastic stuff. And there you go, taking it flat out through a rouge, we almost lose it. And that is why we should not take it flat in the wet. And that has cost us a position to George Russell. Will it also cost us a position to Max Verstappen? He's going to go for it for sure on the inside. We're going to defend and we just keep it. And now that turned into that defensive move turned into an offensive move up against um, George Russell and up into P1. Ahead of Max Verstappen, ahead of Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso in P5 in his McLaren. So it's happy days for him so far as now we need to keep this position. But we are not very good in the wets and George Russell is already trying to go back round our outside. And he's certainly doing well to do it. But we have kept it. Now it's the last lap of the race. George Russell's fallen. There wasn't much to talk about. I thought about going on the Inters but it, the risks wouldn't be good wouldn't be enough for the rewards we move up to the line we take p1 it was a pretty boring sprint if i'm honest no not much overtaking the sapper was there he barely challenged us the only action was that russell was being got overtaken but on that it's a win in the sprint which we are absolutely going to take So that was P1 for us then in the sprint. Piastri going up to P12 from P13. Leclerc dropping down to P6. Drogovic only up to P21. So not ideal debut for him in the Williams. So now let's head to the race. Where we now are here in the formation lap. On the soft tyres we will be doing a soft medium strategy and Alonso started on the hard, so very interesting decision from him. As we, as here we are warming up the tyres, Verstappen right behind us. This is going to need to be a good start for us because Verstappen is going to be right on our tail. Let's here we go then, five red lights for the Belgian Grand Prix here in Season 2. We're on pole, Verstappen second. It's lights out and away we go. We were held for quite a long time there. But we go over to cover off Verstappen immediately. But he's not seemed to have the best of starts. And we lead easily into turn one. George Russell is trying to go round the outside of Max Verstappen. He's gone past Sainz and Verstappen in the space of two corners. What a start for the Brits from Kingston. Amazing stuff. As now he's going to challenge us for the lead in the slipstream. Russell gain, gaining, gaining. He's going to go round the outside of us. Russell from P4 to P1. They say, the Crofty would say, here comes Sebastian Vettel. I say, here comes George Russell round the outside. He's gone from P4 to P1. No, not quite. We just defend from George Russell. Wow, what a start for him though. Incredible stuff. As, but we still lead in P1 after from George Russell, Verstappen in third, Carlos Sainz in fourth, Norris in fifth, and George Russell wants to go round the outside of us. 
We take too much cover and he's done it. Russell, there goes George Russell. He's up into P1. He leads the Belgian Grand Prix. Incredible. The soft tyres are really working for him. Unlike they, and they're not working for us or any of the cars behind us. He's fired those tyres up like nobody's business. Is now throw Rouge on lap two. We want to come back at him, taking it flat out. Russell also taking it flat out. Now in the slipstream, gaining. No, ER, no DRS, no ERS enabled next lap. Gaining, gaining, go to the outside of George Russell. Can we break later? We do, and we go round the outside of George Russell and retake P1. But George Russell's going to fight us, though, and he's going to go for it. But we could just keep it round the outside and keep the P1. But Russell, incredible. He seems very feisty today, and he looks like he wants to go for the win. Let's hope he isn't blocked by anyone in the pit lane, because this George Russell, when unleashed on these soft tyres, is not how going to be... It's not messing around whatsoever, and he does re-overtake us, but then we re-overtake Russell and go up into P1 once again with DRS on lap 5. But at this point, the soft tyres are beginning to wear. Our pit is on lap 7, as you can see. We are pitting now. We bridge the gap to Carlos Sainz. George Russell pit earlier on the softs. So we come into the pit lane now. Carlos Sainz five seconds behind us at entry. Piastri passed us. He looks like he's doing well so far. So we turn in. Very long turning. We need a good stop from the crew. Which they do give us a good stop. 2.4 seconds. We will take that. As we come out of the pit lane. We are in P8. And Felipe Drogovic is ahead of us in P7. It might get a bit spicy if we catch up to him in time. for Before he pits. We've got to gain four seconds on him. In this one lap alone. But that's not too easy. Dragovic pits. We take the lead of the Grand Prix. And Piastri is in P2. He pits. And he comes out way down below. He, he's getting hold, held up so much. Being at the end of the pit lane is not ideal. And I think Piastri came out around P15. And that was the penultimate lap of the race. We have been struggling with our engine. Our engine was a bit worn. And we've really been struggling. There Carlos Sainz takes the lead of the race we were doing so well we had a seven second gap to him when he when everyone had shuffled throughout the pit lane we're going to try and fight him though onto the last lap we're going to try and break later go around the outside of signs but no can't really do it we've really been struggling though as you can see just a snap of oversteer these medium tires have not been working we've got a bit of engine wear as well as we start the final lap in p2 and signs is already eight tenths ahead of us if we can hang on to the drs of the side, for I know we almost we almost lose it, and that's going to give Perez a chance to go for the move into um, O Rouge, which he's got us before. Then, but has he gone too early? Do we still have the DRS? We do. That could be so crucial. As now on Perez gaining, we will get re overtake Sergio Perez and up into P2. But he's still there, but we break later than the Mexican and keep. The position as we go wide again is so difficult. This engine is not helping whatsoever. I'm, I don't think it's the engine. I'm blaming the engine quite a bit. It's more the the tyres have just got no grip. And we're sort of spinning out everywhere. Drifting through the corner. Sainz is going to win this by about 10 seconds at this rate. But the engine is a bit slow. We have had some engine where I forgot to change it before. As Perez re goes for takes us. The closer tries to overtake us. We defend. We have to go wide. But surely... Perez, we won't be able to re-overtake him. But now Charles Leclerc, will we be able to keep Charles Leclerc and keep on the podium? No, we won't because Leclerc's gone for the move on us. And now going into the final corner, a couple corners, onto the last back straight. Are we going to be able to keep the position on Lando Norris? And even George Russell, because George Russell pit way too early on the mediums. And no, there goes Lando Norris. He's overtaken us. We go onto the grass and that's pretty much summed up this stint. But can we make a last gasp re-overtake on Lando? Round the outside. Maybe. No, we go deep. And that's going to allow George Russell to go round the outside. And we take the snap of everything. That's going to help. Russell's got us. But we're going to regain. We gain and we just overtake him at the line. What a photo finish that was. Oh my words. P5. But it could have been easily P6. We'll take that, but it should have been P1. But just like Verstappen learned last year, you can't win every race.
So then it's P3 for us overall in the weekend. Not ideal, but Piastri gets four points. It would have been a lot more. He did show some good pace then, but unfortunately it was not enough. We still lead by almost 100 points to George Russell, so I'm not sure that is really an issue at the, at the moment. But it's a shame we couldn't win in Spa. It's quite an iconic track, you know. It's just a, a bit unfortunate. Felipe Djokovic up into P18 overall. And that is it before the season break. Everyone, if you have enjoyed this half of my F1 23, my team career mode, do make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going for 100 subscribers. And with your help, I know I can do it. So make sure to hit that red button below for weekly F1 career mode content. And as you saw previously at the end of my F season one content, that did really well. So if you want me to continue that content, just drop a comment below. That went out a couple of weeks ago from where, um, from my perspective, I'm quite ahead on recording. So if you have enjoyed this half and this part of my F123 career mode, make sure to like, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time for the Italian Grand Prix. See you guys then. Goodbye.